there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing some kind of tracing in the stencil. So just another way that we are able to use our stencils to get a little bit different look. Now I'm going to start off here by using a quite a large heart die and some Gina K masking paper. This is a really good quality, especially if you're going to be adding ink and things on top of it. I'm just going to cut off that little bit of excess at the top and I can save that for another project. And then I have my uh, card front here, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches at the moment. That's just what I cut all of my card fronts down to. And then always to line up my uh, masks here, when I'm using masking paper, I take half of the release paper off, then kind of line it up with the half that still has it on. That's the part that I'm touching to the paper. And then I push down on the side that is exposed and then I can take off the release paper off the other side. And that way it's generally nice and even. Then I have this heart stencil and honestly any stencils are going to work. You can just choose your pattern. And I'm gonna take a fine line um, black liner pen any again is going to work. I choose to use one that is waterproof for today's techniques, but you could, uh, depending on the technique that you're using to color them, I mean, you could use any type that you have. And even just a black pen would work really well, uh, just like a biro, just a normal pen. But you could also, if you wanted to get fancy, then you could use an embossing pen for this stage as well. And then add some embossing powder afterwards and you would have that nice raised lip if you wanted to do um, some watercolors or something like that on your shapes. But I am very, very simply just going through and going around the outline of all of the hearts of this little stencil. A couple of them are so small that they're only going to basically stay black. And then a couple of others are really, really tiny, but I'm able to get their general outline. And then even though I have a mask down underneath this stencil, I can roughly see where I need to stop. And I'm just kind of going over the edge just a tiny little bit. But you can see that that mask is still on there and I'm going to leave that on for the next part too. Then I'm going to take my alcohol markers for today. I have this tri-blend set. This is fantastic. There's 24 markers in here. Yes, it is a little bit of an investment, but every marker has three colors to it. So I'm using the True Blue Blend and the Dull Green Blend for today. Just something a little bit different, so like a blues and a greens together. And then I'm not going to kind of go through this process. I'm going to go through it pretty fast because um, depending on which coloring in method you choose, it doesn't really matter. I am going to use all three colors for the larger hearts. Um, there are three different alcohol markers in each barrel, which means I don't have to think about which colors are going to blend together nicely at all. All of that work is done for me. And as someone who is not very confident or experienced in using alcohol markers, this is what counts for me. So this is why these pens are a good investment for me but to each their own, of course. Now, I decided that I would do one on craft as well. So I have cut out another slightly smaller heart die here, and then I actually decided to use a little bit bigger piece of craft cardstock. I've taken off one side of the release paper, lined it up, and then I'm gonna take off the other side, although with this one, I will end up cutting it down, so I knew it wasn't gonna matter just too much, but I thought it would be interesting to do the same technique on craft cardstock and kind of see which results I got from that. Obviously, your alcohol markers and things are going to react differently on the craft cardstock, but you could also color them in with something like oxides, and they would show up brilliantly on the craft cardstock. Colored pencils, they work really nicely and show up. I mean, lots of different methods show up really well, but I was still keen to keep on with my alcohol markers because I know that they can also have a really nice effect. So I'm essentially doing exactly the same thing. I chose to go ahead and use exactly the same stencil. That way it can be a really nice comparison as well. And I'm really just drawing around the outside of all of the hearts all over again. A couple of things I will just quickly mention. If you are inspired by today's video or you give it a go, I would love to see your creations. This is one of my favorite parts of the community that we have created here. So the best place to do that is over on my Facebook page so that I can see all of the photos uh, and or videos that you post up there of your creations. So that is called Come Crafting with Natasha. You can either search for it or there is a link down below too. And also I will have uh, links to all of the supplies that I can find. I will pop those in the description box uh, below too but I'm sure that you have stencils and I'm sure that you have a coloring method that you are able to give this a go with so this is a technique that probably doesn't take any special equipment and things if you have been crafting for even a short amount of time you probably have the things that you are able to give this one a go 
I also wanted to mention that was really important to me here is that I had the buy me a coffee I mentioned that a few videos ago and I have a link to it down below and I just wanted to say thank you so much it's very hard to kind of get across just what it means to be in this community this is such a special and I'm just amazed I, I'm just amazed that you know I have this group of people here who are so so supportive and I love being able to support your hobbies by being able to kind of share inspiration and share these videos I, I just consider myself really really lucky so just a really really big thank you from me if you are able to comment on this video if you are able to hit those like buttons which helps get uh, support your youtubers and let youtube know that you like their videos you shouldn't underestimate how much that means to a YouTuber to have those little things. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who comments, who likes, who uh, the buy me a coffees, just everybody. I'm so, so grateful. Now back to this video after the waffle, I have gone over with a tiny little bit of pink ink for the craft cardstock one and then a really little bit of light blue for the blues and greens one. Then I decided to trace around the outside of this heart just kind of using the mask as a guide. Now these cards are going to come out slightly different. I thought I would kind of do them in a couple of different ways just so that you can get a couple of different ideas in how you could finish these both off. So I will show you two finished cards today. And I guess even though my eyes are kind of drawn to the blue and the green one, I do still really like the reds and the purples and I like how it came out. So it was something a little bit different to try on the craft cardstock and I really like it. So there I've pulled off the mask. This is the fun part, right? <laughs> it looks really cool once you take off and you get those nice crisp clean edges. Now just to kind of do something again a little bit different and I'm doing this freehand and would probably be better if you had a slightly thicker pen to work with. I was just probably going for the easiest option which was the pen that I had in my hand and I'm going to create a sort of shadow to go around my heart um, and so it kind of it's meant to look a little bit three-dimensional um, without there being actually any dimension on the page. So I'm just doing a slightly thicker black line up on the top of that left part and then on the right hand side there too I will create a thicker and thicker drop shadow just as I said so it looks a little bit more dimensional. Something really really easy to do and I did it completely freehand so it's definitely not perfect and then I just added a tiny little bit of white pen up there on the right hand side and then this this is kind of that part finished. I'm keeping these cards really, really simple. It was a fun technique to be able to use my stencils to kind of draw through them. And I mean, I guess if you wanted to, then you could uh, skip the kind of drawing the black lines around them and just do colors with inking through the stencils. But I knew that I wanted to have two different colors inside each of the hearts. So I thought inking them would be slightly trickier. This is the all occasion sentiment sheets from Paper Rose. There are 12 sheets in here and this is just another one of these things that I'm getting into a little bit at the moment. I think sometimes I get slightly tired of some of the stamps that I have, some of the sentiments and I just want some really nice uh, sentiments that are super easy without having to go through all the stamping and things. So I chose to try out some of these. I actually got two packs of these and I really, really like them. I was surprised by the quality. I was surprised by the number of sentiments that I liked in these I was worried that they would be kind of ones that I wouldn't use I was surprised that there are lots of repetition of the sentiments that I would use over and over again so I like that that there's not just one and then I've kind of used it and it's gone so yeah I was really surprised and these have been a really nice addition to my craft space recently now I cut down that little craft uh, heart there and I have added on a little fine white border and then I have a, I think it ended up being 4x4 four four inch uh, card base in the same craft cardstock. Now aside from using another layer of cardstock for the white layer there, I haven't got any dimension on this card at the moment. So this is going to be a happy anniversary card. So I'm going to have one end be completely flat and then just do a little fishtail in the other end. Nothing too fancy at all and then this is where I decided I would add one little piece of foam tape. Now if you wanted to keep your card completely flat obviously you could just pop this down flat and that would go through the mail really really nicely but that tiny bit of dimension is not going to um, bother me at all if I'm sending this through the mail. So 
This is card number one done and dusted. And now moving on to the second one. I have cut this down just ever so slightly and then I want there to be a really small trim. Now for whatever reason, I decided not to do my trick using the ink and the masking tape. Um, I just decided to actually put this down and get another layer, a matting layer behind it. So just whatever works for you. And this is just what I felt like today. Both ways are going to work perfectly fine. If you have seen my videos uh, before, if you've watched a few of them, then you probably know the technique that I'm talking about. Um, otherwise what I do is I just put a piece of masking tape of um, mint tape down the side and I just color it with black ink and then that way I have created a border without having to add an extra piece of cardstock but today I just decided to use the extra piece of cardstock which is fine too and then I'm going to pop this one on a bit of an angle just for something a little bit different which is something that I don't often do and the heart still feels like it's up the right way so I liked that and then I'm going to cut out a couple of these sentiments and kind of stitch them together I have got a recipient in mind for this little card so this one is going to be a little baby boy card so this is going to say congratulations on your baby boy and again just because I have a little black border with the actual heart I'm going to pop these two little sentiments down on some black cardstock to create a little fine border you could also just do some little inking some little um beautiful light, light inking around the outside of each of the sentiments and that would work fine too but this is a pretty clean card so I was trying to keep it that way with creating the borders and things rather than inking and again I did decide to pop a little bit of foam tape up on these two sentiments and other than that the card is not dimensional not uh, too much dimension at all and then this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base so once I've got the sentiments on, I'm keeping these cards really, really clean and simple and I'm not going to add any other little gems or little bits and pieces, but you definitely could. But this is my two cards finished for today. So I hope that you have enjoyed this technique and this is something that you can give a go. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly, I really appreciate having you here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye. Thank you.